Nortec offers various humidistats and sensors for various humidification needs. To understand the differences in these devices and how to connect them, let's start by taking a look at the average humidifier. Here we see the Nortec electrode humidifier model NHEL. This humidifier has two main control loops that must be satisfied in order for the humidifier to run. The first loop is called the security loop and is a simple go, no go loop. Closing this loop completes the first circuit of the control loops. The second control loop is the modulation loop. This loop requires that a voltage be applied to dictate the desired output of the humidifier. The humidifier can be set up with various ranges to correspond with the respective controlling device. Now let's take a look at how many devices we should consider when controlling a humidifier such as the NHEL. As a rule, we should be looking at three devices for all humidifiers when these humidifiers are connected to a ducted air system. The air proving device, the room control device, and the high limit protection device. Just as the name implies, the air proving device indicates if the supply duct is provided with airflow since we only want to provide steam to a duct that has air movement. These devices are traditionally on-off, which means they use a set of dry contacts and either close or open between the contacts. On-off devices are wired in series with each other and must complete the humidifier's security loop. The room control device can be a humidistat. A humidistat may have a built-in sensor to read relative humidity or might have a remotely mounted sensor probe to achieve the same thing. Humidistats compare the relative humidity reading to a set point that is placed on the device's keypad. The set point to place on this device should be that of the desired room condition, say between 40 to 60 percent relative humidity. The humidistats can be one of two types, on-off or modulating. On-off, as we learned earlier, must be wired in series with other on-off devices and will ultimately dictate the humidifier security loop. Alternatively, the humidistat can be of modulating style, which means it will vary an outputting voltage based on a required demand of humidity. This voltage is sent to the humidifier's modulating loop, also known as the second control loop. As an alternative to humidistats as room control devices, sensors can be used and wired directly to the humidifier. This is possible with Nortec humidifiers because of a built-in PID controller. This means that the logic to compare a set point to a room reading is already built in to Nortec humidifiers and can therefore be used if sensors are wired directly to the humidifier. The difference with a sensor is twofold. It sends a voltage, however this voltage represents a sensed relative humidity. And second, the set point must be placed at the humidifier's keypad, not at the sensor. Sensors are generally more attractive for applications where cost is a factor. Sensors are also preferred where building management systems will be used to read and control all equipment in a system. The third device is the high limit protection device. This device can also be a humidistat. As mentioned earlier, humidistats may have a built-in sensor to read relative humidity or might have a remotely mounted sensor probe to achieve the same thing. Humidistats compare the relative humidity reading to a set point that is placed on the device's keypad. The set point to place on this high limit device should be around 85% relative humidity to protect the supply air from reaching saturation. Effectively, the room controlling device is differentiated by the high limit in two ways, its location and its set point. A high limit will be placed in the supply duct downwind from the distribution and will have a high set point of 85%. When contrasted to a room controller that will be placed in the room and will have a required space set point of 40 to 60%. Again, the high limit humidistat can also be one of two types, on-off 
or modulating. On-off, as we learned earlier, must be wired in series with other on-off devices and will ultimately dictate the humidifier's security loop. Alternatively, the humidistat can be of modulating style, which means it will vary an outputting voltage based on a required demand of humidity. This voltage is sent to the humidifier's modulating loop, also known as the second control loop. As an alternative to humidistats as high limits, sensors could be used and wired directly to the humidifier. This is possible with Nortec humidifiers because of a built-in PID controller. This means that the logic to compare a set point to a room reading is already built into Nortec humidifiers and can therefore be used if sensors are wired directly to the humidifier. The difference with the sensor is twofold. It sends a voltage, however, this voltage represents a sensed relative humidity. And second, the set point must be placed at the humidifier's keypad, not at the sensor. Sensors are generally more attractive for applications where cost is a factor. Sensors are also preferred when building management systems will be used to read and control all equipment in a system. Now that we've explored the three main controlling devices, we can see that there are various possibilities. Next, we'll take you through various examples to make sure you have a better understanding of how to wire these devices. Let us consider the following three specific devices. On-off air proofing switch, modulating room humidistat, modulating high limit humidistat. With these three devices, the wiring would be as follows. The on-off air proving switch would start from the 24 volts AC on the humidifier's low voltage terminal strip, typically pin 1. This is the first control loop that we explored earlier. This means 24 volts would leave the humidifier on pin 1, reach the common pin of the air proving switch, and when there is airflow, the device will close the connection across the common and the normally open contact, which will then be wired back to pin 2. The return for the security loop, a relatively simple circuit. Next, the modulating room humidistat would wire to the humidifier's modulating loop. Note that this is simple, but does require more conductors. These devices have internal circuitry and a visual display. Thus, they need power to operate. We therefore use the 24 volts AC source from our humidifier, pin 1, and wire to the respective terminal on the humidistat. We do the same thing with the ground, typically pin 3 on the humidifier, and run it to the respective ground pin of the humidistat. Now, we can wire the modulating conductor this is generally the pin labeled 0 to 10 volts DC on the humidistat. And we run this to the humidifier's channel 1 modulation input, typically pin 4. Finally, the modulating high limit humidistat would also wire to the humidifier's modulating loop. Note that the humidifier has two modulating channels to accommodate our exact scenario. Just as previously mentioned, we must wire power and ground to the humidistat. After this, we wire the modulating output, 0 to 10 volts DC, back to the humidifier and land it on channel 2 modulation, typically pin 5. Congratulations, your wiring is now complete. Next, let's look at the following three devices. On-off air proving switch, on-off high limit, and modulating humidistat. With these three devices, the wiring would be as follows. The on-off air proving switch would start from the 24 volts AC on the humidifier low voltage terminal strip, pin 1. This is the first control loop that we explored earlier. This means 24 volts would leave the humidifier on pin 1, reach the common pin of the air proving switch, then, when there is airflow, the device will close the connection across the common and the normally open contact which will then be wired to the next on-off device in the loop, which is our high limit. Next, the on-off high limit humidistat will require power and ground from the humidifier. These devices have internal circuitry and a visual display, thus they need power to operate. 
We therefore use the 24 volts AC source from our humidifier, pin 1, and wire it to the respective terminal on the humidistat. We do the same thing with the ground, pin 3 on our humidifier, and run it to the respective ground pin of the humidistat. After this, we will take the conductor that came from the air proving switch and use it as the incoming signal to the humidify relay. Recall the on-off humidistat opens or closes a contact based on the humidity requirement. Since we have placed a high set point, the humidistat will call for the humidity unless we reach too high of a reading. The output pin of the relay will then return to the humidifier on its security loop, pin 2. Finally, the modulating room humidistat would wire to the humidifier's modulating loop. Note that this is simple, but does require more conductors. These devices have internal circuitry and a visual display, thus they need power to operate. We therefore use the 24 volts AC source from our humidifiers, pin 1, and wire to the respective terminal on the humidistat. We do the same thing with the ground, pin 3 on our humidifier, and run it to the respective ground pin of the humidistat. Now we can wire the modulating conductor. This is generally the pin labeled 0 to 10 volts DC on the humidistat. And we run this to the humidifier's channel 1 modulation input, pin 4 usually. Your wiring is now complete. Next, let us consider the following three specific devices. On-off air proving switch, on-off high limit humidistat, on-off room humidistat. With these three devices, the wiring would be as follows. The on-off air proving switch would wire to the humidifier security loop. This means the security loop would leave the humidifier on pin 1, reach the common pin of the air proving switch, then when there is airflow, the device will close the connection across the common and the normally open contact, which will then be wired to the next on-off device in the loop, which is our high limit. Next, the on-off high limit humidistat will require power and ground from the humidifier. These devices have internal circuitry and a visual display, thus they need power to operate. We therefore use the 24 volts AC source from our humidifiers, pin 1, and wire to the respective terminal on the humidistat. We do the same thing with the ground, pin 3 on our humidifier, and run it to the respective ground of the humidistat. After this, we will take the conductor that came from the air proving switch and use it as the incoming signal to the humidify relay. Recall that the on-off humidistat opens and closes a contact based on the humidity requirement. Since we have placed a high set point, the humidistat will call for humidity unless we reach too high of a reading. The output pin of the relay will then go to the final device in the on-off chain, which is the room on-off humidistat. The on-off room humidistat will require power and ground from the humidifier. These devices have internal circuitry and a visual display, thus they need power to operate. We therefore use the 24 volt AC source from our humidifiers and tap off the same supply as the previous high limit and wire to the respective terminals on the humidistat. We do the same thing with the ground and run it to the respective ground pin on the humidistat. After this, we will take the conductor that came from the on-off high limit and use it as the incoming signal to the humidify relay. Recall that the on-off humidistat opens or closes a contact based on the humidity requirement. As long as both the air proving switch and the high limit make the loop, we will receive the signal and can relay it to the humidifier security loop should there be a need of humidification. The output pin of the relay will then go to the humidifier security loop, pin 2. The final step is to take care of the modulating loop. This is the second control loop on the humidifier, by using a jumper to fake a demand signal of 100%. Jumping typically pins 6 to 4, and changing the respective parameters in the humidifier's keypad for corresponding voltage range. What this does is tell the humidifier to run at 100% as long as the first security loop is completed. Recall that all three devices must complete the loop for the humidifier to run. 
your wiring is now complete. With these points, you should have a better understanding of how to wire controls to a Nortec humidifier. When it comes to controls, no one has more experience with humidity than Nortec. Our humidifiers provide pure atmospheric steam and work in any environment that has electricity and potable water. Nortec units have the highest efficiency possible and are the easiest in the world to operate and maintain. Nortec became the world's dominant choice for humidification through innovation, through proven reliability, and by offering services that are unrivaled by any other company. When you need humidification, choose Nortec. Contact us today to make sure you have the best humidification solution. For more information, go to humidity.com to contact your local Nortec agent.